Hey, it's uh, Dan Morales, and here's the deal. Uh, Fish and I had actually did a recording uh, for, uh, we actually did a Facebook Live here um, for the group, uh, but for whatever reason, with technical difficulties and stuff like that, uh, it just didn't work, right? So what I told Fish I would do is I would just shoot a quick video and kind of share with you guys uh, some of the stuff that I've learned in my 27 years of doing this, okay? Uh, just a little bit of background on myself. Um, I started in uh, 1991, and um, I actually started uh, as a bank teller originally, and am now a uh, regional vice president for a bank, and I oversee a uh, lending office. Uh, I am a producing manager, okay? So, um, you know, the stuff I'm sharing with you is stuff uh, from a guy that actually still lends, but actually still manages a group of people as well, too. So, uh, you know, and I've got numbers to back up uh, what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, it's one thing when people talk about doing, you know, a, a fair clip of business or they talk about, oh, hey, I self-generate my own business, blah, blah, blah. Uh, more often than not, you know, what I find is typically lenders who work for a bank, uh, more often than not, are more reliant or dependent on the business the bank generates uh, than their own ability to generate their own business. So um, with that being said, I work for a bank. I've always worked for banks, uh, but I've also always generated my own business. Now, you know, there's a lot uh, going on with, you know, the, you know, the shift in the market, okay? Uh, and there's definitely a shift. Um, you know, if, you, if you've got uh, any kind of real solid connections with those in the industry, there's definitely a slowing down of the housing market, and there's certainly the shift uh, that's taking place. Now, how do you thrive in the middle of a shift as opposed to just surviving in that shift? Okay, uh, and you know, one of the things that I wanna talk about is I'm seeing a lot of those of you in the industry who have this mindset of fear, uh, a mindset of desperation, um, you know, a mindset of, you know, what's the bare minimum that I need to do to be able to survive, let alone thinking about thriving, okay? Uh, let me just say that if that's your mindset, you are already defeated, right? You Because you're defeating yourself. You're allowing fear and you know the fear of just being able to barely survive or I don't know if I'm gonna survive or I don't know where my next deal is gonna come from. You're allowing that fear to drive you, right? And, and it's gonna drive you right down, okay? Uh, as opposed to a mindset of, you know, the glass is half full versus half empty, right? So, you know, taking that mindset of, you know, how do I not just survive, but how do I thrive in the marketplace, right? How do I actually look for opportunities to expand and or grow my business uh, in the, going into 2019, okay? Right, like I said it, grow your business going into 2019 because I think the opportunity is there. In the midst of every challenge, there's great opportunity if you can see it, right? And you can't see it if you cloud your own vision or your own mindset because you're too busy, you know, letting fear grab a hold of you and grip you, okay? So let's get away from fear and let's look into like, you know, growing and, in, 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 you know, if you will, thriving into 2019, okay? Now, with that being said, like I said, I've done this uh, since 1991. There's a few things I learned along the way. Okay, um, I've kind of made a niche uh, doing hard loans, doing loans that other people can't get done. Um, you know, that's where I, I've made a niche, and you know, I've built a really rock solid reputation with realtors, where they know that if I can't get it done, it's not likely going to get done anywhere else. Okay, I also work for a bank that is really deep uh, in product. Uh, whether it's a portfolio or third-party investor or you know a direct uh, ticket to Freddie, Fannie, and Jenny, uh, we do a lot of stuff that other people won't do. Uh, so I've got a really nice repertoire of tools available to me to help serve my clients, uh, which is helpful. Uh, now, with that being said, not everybody's going to have maybe all of those tools and/or resources available to them uh, because maybe you know you work for a shop that's a little more limited in product offering and/or uh, is a little more restrictive in, in what's available to you. Okay. Now, with that being said, how how do you thrive in uh, the market going into 2019? Uh, a couple of niches that oftentimes go overlooked by lenders uh, is there's two of them. Okay, the first one uh, would be self-employed borrowers. Okay, now for a lot of you, you don't really know how to properly analyze uh, a borrower's tax returns to determine whether or not they actually qualify for a mortgage. And some of you, dare I say, might be lazy right, uh, and depend on something like Loan Beam or something like that, and you make the assumption that Loan Beam or, you know, some other tool like that 
is going to actually give you an accurate calculation of the borrower's income that you would use to qualify. Well, I'm here to tell you that you know, uh, as much as you know, you know, people want to create this uh, fear that we're going to be automated and put out of a job by artificial intelligence and and automation and so on. I'm here to tell you that that's not likely going to happen during the course of my tenure as a mortgage loan officer. And there's probably a pretty fair chance that it's not going to happen uh, during the course of yours. Okay, so but you need to understand how to properly qualify a borrower who's self-employed because I can tell you a lot of you don't know how to do that. And when you turn that borrower down, many times you're missing out on opportunities where there really was a viable loan if you really understood what it took to qualify that borrower who was self-employed. Okay, don't count on an underwriter uh, to be able to do that stuff. You know, calculate income for you and so on. Learn how to do that yourself. Yourself. Because in the process of learning how to do that, you'll make sure that you don't miss an opportunity. Because dare I say that there are often times that an underwriter is wrong, or an underwriter doesn't have the depth of knowledge or skill set that they should have for the position they have. Uh, I can tell you in my 27 years, I have battled many underwriters and I have won many times. Okay, you can too, but you have to have the knowledge to be able to do that. Okay, uh, so you know, take some time, invest in uh, you know some of the online courses that are available through MGIC and some of the other PMI companies when it comes to how to you know accurately read tax returns and financial statements and to understand business structures and so on. Because the more you understand those things, the better you can understand your your client's overall financial picture and situation. The better you can understand their business. The more opportunity there is to actually pull income out of all these different things because I got news for you your you know self-employed clients are, are typically very savvy uh, they're typically high FICO score they're typically you know in all honesty well qualified if you knew how to calculate their income correctly and they're generally really good deals I've had countless deals that have been turned down by other lenders where the client self-employed I've been able to put the deal together sell it to Freddie and Fannie and, and get the loan done and then those clients become really good sources of business not only only, you know, uh, you know, for themselves, but they also will turn around and refer me to other people in, in that sphere of influence that they have. So that's one of those areas that is oftentimes overlooked by people because they're too lazy. They're not willing to do the work. Okay. Uh, the other area is non-owner occupied uh, deals. Okay, investment properties. Um, Again, another area, right? Self-employed and non-owner occupied oftentimes go hand in hand, right? Because you have clients who, you know, are buying investment properties. Those investment properties are going to show up on their schedule E on their tax returns oftentimes, or they're going to show up in a uh, yeah, LLC partnership, you know, 1065 return or, or something like that. You need to understand how those businesses function in the cash flow, uh, you know, how to properly determine cash flow, you know, when being able to qualify a borrower who has multiple properties. This one gets blown all all the time okay i see people you know screw the pooch in this one all the time right um i can't tell you how many times i've had clients that have come here who have been turned down by multiple other lenders just closed a deal for a realtor who was turned down on an investment property deal by five other lenders the one lender that could get them done was kind of like a hard money deal and they wanted to charge them 12 percent well, ironically, uh, you know, all of those people had no clue what the hell they were doing because I was actually able to get that deal done and sold it to Fannie Mae because I knew what I was doing. Uh, you know, the deal with investment property is those guys are buying houses all the time, right? Uh, whether the market's up, down, happy, or sad, they're typically buying houses uh, and they're doing multiple transactions, right? And oftentimes they're selling properties, they're buying new ones, they're pulling cash out of others to be able to buy the next one and so on. So really get to know that niche because there's a great opportunity there if you take your time to really know it and understand it. The same thing is true with those folks who are self-employed. There's a wonderful opportunity there if you take the time to really know it you know everybody wants to be the expert okay you know shooting a video and putting it on Facebook doesn't make me the expert okay uh, taking the time to really know your craft or your trade does help you to become an expert uh, because you really know what you're doing then you really are an expert okay um, one of the things that drives me absolutely bonkers okay as a producing manager who manages a group of salespeople one of the things that I've always trained my people to do is look for the answer yourself a lot of you won't look for the answer you just want to ask a question in a group horrible idea okay look for the answer yourself first 
you know, rather than to go, you know, ask an answer, ask for an answer in a group, uh, a Facebook group, which who knows who's giving you the answer, who knows if it's right, who knows if it's their company's unique, specific interpretation, and so on. You, you don't know what you don't know because you won't take the time to read the guidelines yourself. Now, I have news for you. Uh, you know, since 1991, I've always read guidelines. Okay, I read guidelines for fun. Well, why do I do that? Because in the process of reading that stuff, I really know what I can and can't do. So when I'm able to, to get a connection to a client, I can drive them you know, through this process confidently because I know what I'm doing. I know what's gonna work, I know what's not gonna work. So that when I run into a situation where the client wants to do something that's not gonna work, I can not only tell them it's not gonna work, but I can explain to them why, and I can oftentimes propose a different structure or a different way to, to get to you know as close to where they wanna be as possible because I know what I'm doing. So rather than spending a bunch of time scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or, or you know Snapchatting or whatever, you know, we all can get sucked into the whole social media thing and good stuff like that. Take some time and go offline, okay? Go offline. Subscribe to Fannie Mae's uh, newsletters, Freddie Mac's newsletters. Go under their websites and start reading that information. Go into you know the FHA uh, website and start reading that stuff. Go into the VA 26-7. Start taking some time to really invest in your depth of knowledge, okay? Because that depth of knowledge, I can tell you, is going to make you money if you do it. Um, if you don't, that's fine too, because I'll just take your business going into 2019, okay? So don't be lazy. Do the work, okay? You know, I, I, I tell my kids that there's so much opportunity because so many people are not willing to do the work. So don't let that be you. Be willing to do the work. Be willing to get after it and be willing to, you know, hustle to, to get it, right? Because 2019 doesn't have to be a year of just surviving. It can totally be a year of thriving if you're willing to do the work that other people aren't willing to do. So those two areas are two areas that are oftentimes overlooked by lenders. I like to think of them as low-hanging fruit and I like to think of them as, as areas where there's generally a fair amount of opportunity if you're willing to invest in your knowledge and your skill, to, skill set to better understand those areas uh, you know, going forward. So, uh, you know, I, again, I don't wanna make this too long, uh, but I told Fish I would offer some of that stuff. Um, you know, and here's the thing, guys. Um, you know, I do a lot of loans that are turned down by other lenders, you know, where realtors will get people here. Um, you know, and I do a lot of loans that uh, other lenders will send to me uh, because I built relationships with them. So I would tell you, um, you know, oftentimes we think, oh my gosh, it's my competitor. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know that some of you watching this video uh, work in markets that, you know, I, I may compete against you. And I'm fine with sharing some information because at the end of the day, there's more than enough business. And in all honesty, there's oftentimes a lot of people that may watch a video like this, but they're not gonna actually do the work to get out there and hustle and, and, and to, to grow themselves or to grow their business. Now, with that being said, um, I would tell you, you know, be no Known as the expert, but in order to be known as the expert, it takes more than shooting a video. It takes some investments in time and energy to be able to go through and really learn your guidelines uh, so that you really know what you can and can't do. To build those relationships with agents where even if you're not the lender of first choice, they think of you, uh, hey, this deal can't get done. You know, man, shoot it over to Dan. Dan can get it done. Uh, truth be told, if every agent uh, you know that sends me the stuff that can't get done were to send me all of their business, I probably couldn't handle it anyways, okay? So, you know, the fact that sometimes I'm a lender of second choice for some of those things, I'm A-OK -okay with that uh, because business is business and I'll take it. And truth be told, I couldn't take all of the business even if I wanted to, right? Uh, and, and with that being said, I don't want to work with every realtor. And that's a topic for a different video on a different day. Uh, but uh, hopefully, you know, in the course of this video, you picked up a couple things that will hopefully help you. Um, you know, one of the things that I would tell you going into 2019, if you are not comfortable in front of a camera, you better get comfortable, okay? Uh, because that is probably one of the best tools and resources for being able to get in front of clients and being able to help to build organic lead generation. Now, what you say when you're in front of the camera is up to you to determine. I know what I do, and, and that's part of the secret sauce that I'm not gonna give away, okay? Hey, again, my name is Dan Morales. Um, thanks for watching the video. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm pretty much uh, LinkedIn. You can find me pretty much anywhere. Uh, you know, I do a podcast. Uh, it's Homebuyer Radio. You can find that on iHeartRadio, um, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes. Uh, you know, I'm pretty much everywhere I, I can be. Uh, I produce way too much content. Uh, anyways, hey, I hope you guys have, uh, you know, an awesome holiday season. Hopefully this video has helped you in some way, shape, or form. Um, have a good one. Okay, bye.